Where's the crash site now? Over there. We're getting closer. Hello there, Sir from Seventeen once again, bringing you Chapter Nine in my enslaved hard difficulty video walkthrough. And welcome to the wasteland. This level starts off a little bit like the Terminators when they're on the run. It's all Michael Bayan is helping Sarah Connor get away, and they're just driving in the night, and it's the endless highway. And uh, we get a, a nice little. We're treated to a cutscene of Trip and Monkey getting a little bit closer, a little bit more, you know, realizing the, how much they rely on each other. But this is the wasteland, and uh, we're going to find an interesting character known as Pigsy, who Trip knows, and I think it's a, a one of her friends, fa uh, one of her father's friends. And you don't really know who this guy is at this moment in time. And I actually thought he was a bad guy. Because uh, the achievement names, one of them is like Fried Bacon. So I assumed you had to take him down. So I thought you were going to meet him as a friend. And then you were going to later get betrayed. And then you'd have to take him on and he'd be like the last boss. So I wasn't looking forward to meeting this guy at all. Because I thought it meant it was going to be a boss fight. <laughs> but it turns out, don't worry, spoiler alert. The guy's completely and utterly harmless. He's actually quite funny. And you don't have to fight him at the end at all. You, in fact, there, there is a last boss, but it's a robot, and it's, it's fucking stupid, if you ask me. But th this level's pretty simple. There's a lot of the paths are, are very open to you. It's, it's a case of just moving through the swamp. Don't go in the water, for obvious reasons. Uh, you're going to be using your cloud quite a lot. There is going to be mines. There's going to be a couple of encounters with turrets. I think there might even be a barge section on this level. So it definitely mixes it up. But look at the colours on this on this game. It's so unafraid to throw in any hue. And I love that. So many games these days are like Quake Brown. That it, It's so special to get the ones that just have this... It's just pure effervescence of just craziness. It's just it's just a technical dream coat. I love it. But keep following Trip. Keep doing the, the standard enslaved thing. Picking up the tech of Listening to the little quips between the characters. And just enjoying the game. And uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about Deus Ex. Because. I don't know. The, it's such a love-hate relationship right now. And I really want to stop commentating and play it. But I don't have any videos prepared after the three weeks. And I want to get at least 10 or 20 commentaries done today. So I've got the next few days covered for uploads. Uh, but obviously. Make sure you're on your cloud. Go and deal with the enemies, and uh, collect as many tech orbs as you want. This bit's pretty simple, you just have to keep activating different parts of this area so that Trip can get across. But be careful, because, as you can see, I'm getting my ass handed to me, purely purely for the fact that... <laughs> I, I just get sloppy sometimes, it's the joy of being a gamer. Sometimes you look brilliant, other times you, you just look like a fucking Dalmatian drowning in a bag on the Thames. But, Deus Ex. I've already mentioned that the weapons feel weak. I've already f mentioned that the gunplay doesn't feel great, that the controls have annoyed me. And that the loading screens could be, you know, from a fucking Commodore 64 with how goddamn piss poor they are. But the the one thing that I'm really not understanding is the melee system. Because this is a game where, ideally, the character has bionicle arms, which, for some reason, he pulls giant blades out of them like he's some fucking Suedo MacGyver. And, um... Why did I say MacGyver? I meant Giver. Anybody remember Giver, that anime? Where um, the dude in the suit's got kind of like the blade coming out of his elbow. I think they made a couple of live action movies on Sci-Fi Channel. They all looked really shit because it was about that time where nothing looked good and Swamp Thing came out. All that kind of good stuff. But he's got these blades built into his arms. Yet your, your melee seems to have ammunition. Like a battery charge to it. And I right don't get it. Because there's these two battery symbols uh, on the screen, and I'm assuming it's because I'm a low level, and I don't know how the mechanic's going to branch out into being functional. But at this moment in time, I did a melee. <laughs> I didn't know the controls when I started the game, so on the very first level, I walked up to the first police officer and pressed B on him to try and pull my gun out, and I ended up killing him <laughs> by smacking him. And then his buddy got pissed off, so I had to do the same to him. And then, at the start of the game, I'd already lost both my fucking melee abilities, and I was sat there waiting for it to recharge, not knowing I had to, so I run up to the next guy, who actually was an enemy, and it says, do not have enough. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? And he turned around and shot me in the face, and then I had to sit for 20 minutes through the loading screen, so I wasn't pleased, but... It just seems so weird, and so wrong, and so broken, and I honestly don't know how I'm going to map my character, because I don't like the guns, the stealth kills seem extremely limited, I'm probably just going to fucking pacifist it, and just not do anything, it just seems so weird, but, 
give me a couple days without games, guys, and don't you worry. I will know exactly what I'm doing, and I'll make the best guide I can. But right now, <laughs> I'm in the same boat as anybody that's probably going to be looking for that guide. Because, <laughs> oh, I just feel so fucking bad at that game. But, um, this section's quite interesting. I've, I've, I've approached it from numerous different ways, and I just couldn't get a really, really good strategy. So what I've decided on doing, and which seemed to work really well, if you jump onto your cloud and you jump like a spastic, like I just did then, run all the way down to the bottom and pick up the ammunition for your plasma cannon. The reason I'm doing it is because I don't have any, and uh, it's the most overpowered thing on the game, so get used to using it. And now you've dropped down there, you should get a good five shots, which, if you're accurate and you don't fuck about, that is five dead robots. And uh, here comes the, the faulty robot to use against his buddies. I charge the stun, I slap him, I beat him up till I get the prompt, I use the prompt to kill his friend. And there's almost a poetry to some of the combat on this game when it works. It can really be a, a lot like a puzzle game. And speaking of something being like a puzzle game, uh, my DS saved my life when I was in France. I played it a hell of a lot. And uh, I got a little bit screwed because I, I, I had a ton of games I took with me. And... I thought they were gonna they were gonna do me for ages, and they, they were all JRPGs. They were all really really long RPGs. <coughs> fucking hell! Excuse me. I'm probably gonna edit that out. So if you just if you just hear a random fucking hell, it means there was a sneeze. <laughs> but um, the games I took, they were all really really long RPGs in the hopes that it would you know sate my thirst of gaming for three weeks. And I took uh, a game called Suikoden Tia Kreis, I think it's called Tia Kreis or Tia. There's something fucking tea something and um, I love so we could end the, the old games were fantastic on the PlayStation I only played the second one but it was fantastic so I had high hopes for that one uh, I got Chrono Trigger because everybody says it's such a fantastic game and I, I actually started it on the PC on MAME and I never finished it so I'm looking forward to that I had the remakes of Final Fantasy 3 the remake of Final Fantasy 4 uh, and I had Valkyrie, uh, Valkyrie Profile Covenant of the Plume and uh, to shorten down the, the big conversation, so I don't rant on about this for too long. Uh, Final Fantasy 3 is probably the most evil RPG I've ever played, and I fucking hate it. With every fibre of my body, every bloody scintillating gland, every salient sense of fucking synapse in my brain just makes me want to set it on fire. And the reason that I have such ill fucking feelings towards this game is because they've remade it, they've updated the graphics, they've updated the cutscenes, but it's still... A game that was made 20 fucking years ago. So it's cruel, it's mean, it's just... It's like fucking Saddam Hussein. It's just positively evil. And it's just... It's baffling. It's absolutely baffling. This is a game that some of its mechanics rely on the ability to use magic. For instance, you have to turn into a Todd and you have to... A Todd? Into a Toad. Where the fuck are my words today? And you have to shrink yourself using a spell called Mini. The only problem is, these spells have uh, limited usage. And the game doesn't explain how you get your magic power back. So it's one of those things, do you level your job level up to get your magic power back? Do you just level up to get it back? You're resting and in, it doesn't bring it back. You save and reload, it doesn't bring it back. So in theory, if you fuck about with your magic, you don't have the magic power to continue the game. It's like, what the fuck is this game? How broken is this as a concept? And then to make it even worse, Phoenix Downs, this pivotal moment of Final Fantasy gameplay of reviving a downed character seemed to be as rare as fucking elixirs. So, I've got no Phoenix Downs, no shops sell them, the, there only seems to be these random springs that revive your characters that I can't get back to, so whenever a character dies, I have to turn the fucking game off and reload because I can't physically revive them, so I'm fighting with three people. It is the most horrific thing I've ever played, and I played it for about ten hours and nearly snapped my DS. <laughs> It's fucking awful, and I can remember people saying Final Fantasy 3 is the best Final Fantasy, and don't get me wrong, I don't have this retrospect or this, you know, naivety of youth, and I don't have the... I'm trying to think of the fucking word. Tit nostalgia is the word I'm looking for. I don't have this, you know, titillating nostalgia for it because I played it when I was younger, so I'm just a, an old and bitter gamer playing an old and bitter game. It's, it's just fucking evil. It's like a punch of... Oh, just, oh, oh, I don't like it. And then um, I, I started playing Final Fantasy IV. Biggest problem with that game is I played it for the PlayStation because I owned the, the first remake of it where it all looks 2D and everything. And I got to the end of it. I got to the moon where the last boss is and all those crazy other bosses that just make everything in their game seem easy. 
and I've actually got the the Black Mage album, which is a kind of a spin-off of the Final Fantasy music that they do live, that they released with a band. And there's a song on it called, I think, the Zeromus theme, which is the last boss's name. And I didn't recognise the song, and the reason for that is I must have fought that boss 30 times, but I've never survived long enough to hear the fucking song. That is one of the hardest bosses I have ever faced. I've not killed it, I've not beat it. And the reason for it is I believe you have to spend about 30 hours levelling your characters up to a ridiculous amount to even survive him, and I'm just not willing to do that in my old age. But yeah, biggest problem with that, I'd already played it, so I just, I got to first section, I ended up dying, I didn't save, and I just, I was like, fuck it. Then there was Chrono Trigger, a game I'd been looking forward to playing for a long time, and it turned out that uh, at the start, where I think, I forget her name, but that lady who's created the time machine that goes wrong when that, that other, that Mal goes into it and she ends up getting teleported through time and they're all like, oh Chrono, will you go and save her? Will you be a hero? And you're like, yeah, I will. I'll jump into this vortex. I'll go through time. And then as soon as you jump through the vortex, it goes to this twirly blue screen of weirdness to signify time travel. Then it crashes. <sighs> so, I ended up playing the start of that game about six times throughout the duration of the holiday in the hope that it was going to eventually get past that little bug it had. But it never did, so I never got to play it. And I was really pissed off about that, so that was just a choice I couldn't use. Then there was the Suicide Tier Crease, which, for all intents and purposes, is a fantastic game. It's got a cool story, it's got cool mechanics, it's got a lot of the things that I liked about Suicide uh, There are a few things that are missing, like the one-on-one -on -one fights or the big army battles, but you still get to, to build your castle, you still get to recruit a ridiculous amount of characters to work in your castle and to benefit you, and there's a surprising large amount of strategy to it. Only problem I have is some of the dialogue was written by a five-year-old and it can get a bit whiny at times. But that aside, I beat the game, I enjoyed it, I put a good 30 hours into it and it was it was really, really fun. If you're a, a fiend when it comes to enjoying Japanese RPGs, pick it up, it's well worth the, the price. And then the final game is a game called Valkyrie Profile Covenant of the Plume, which is probably my favourite game on the DS right now. And the reason for this is... It is the most different RPG I've ever played, and I'm in love. I set off playing it uh, in the tent one night when my girlfriend was asleep next to me, and uh, I think it was about maybe 11 o'clock at night, and I really didn't get it. It was so different to everything I'd played. It was just... I should probably preface this with a bit of an explanation, because this section coming up here is very self-explanatory. I don't need to talk too much about it, so I'm going to talk about this. And I do apologise if you have no interest in JRPGs, but I have to tell this because there could be a, a bunch of you who are really into them, and you've never even heard of Valkyrie Profile, and you really need to, because these games are different. They really are. But, I don't like Final Fantasy Tactics. I might like it now because the Valkyrie Profiles turned me onto those kind of action games. Uh, action elements, should I say, in the RPG genre, but... Traditionally, I, I was never a fan, and I played the one on the PlayStation, the one where you could eventually recruit Cloud, and Ares was on it selling flowers, and it had, you know, all those little references to Final Fantasy VII, so when it comes to knowledge and, you know, awareness of Japanese RPGs, I've played a lot of them, because uh, I got obsessed, but that's a story for a, a, another video for, for people that actually want to listen to it, for instance, if I make a guide for an RPG, which I really hope to do in the future, if anything worthwhile comes out. I would have done Star Ocean on Universe difficulty, because that game, start of that game is hard as fuck, but I, <laughs> I managed to do it, and it was really cool. The only problem is, that guy would be about 500 videos long, because they are long games. But anyhow, back to the story. I do apologise, guys. I've had so much to say in the last three weeks that my words are just, they're like rapists pushing through a, a door to a fucking a insane asylum where all the victims are strapped down on beds and that's probably the most horrific and degrading and abusive and I'll probably go to hell for saying it but I don't mind that's where all the good music is but I don't like Final Fantasy Tactics there we go and the reason for it is the combat when you move about I don't like moving during RPG con combat unless it's real time and what I mean by this is, for the layman who's who's like, Chris, what is this? What is a JRPG? Is it, is it a car? Is it a jet ski? Is it a small toothbrush that they've recently invented that also brushes your asshole? I don't know. No, a J <laughs> The combats in, in most RPGs these days, the Western RPGs, it's, it's almost indefinitely real-time based. So you Dragon Ages, you things like that, you run around, you beat stuff up, that's your combat. In your traditional RPGs, it's generally turn-based, or active time battle, or active time bar, which was introduced in the early Final Fantasies, where there's a line of your guys stood there, there's a line of their guys stood there, like Sumatata, the West Side Story, 
And then you take it in turns to slap each other around the face. And that's generally your traditional action sense of, of your RPG. Then you've got your more exotic ones where, for instance, it mixes the two where you might be able to move about, but then when you do your attack, everything freezes and then you queue in your, your moves and it does it a little bit like Eternal Sonata was a little similar to that. There's, there's other games that you can do certain things because it's like magic and stuff that's isolated. But then you have your, your tactic strategy RPG type of thing where your movement is tile based and based off a statistic. And if if you're not really following me on a tile based system, imagine a chessboard and each of your characters is a little bit like a knight. It can move, you know, a certain amount of squares in a certain pattern, but that's all it can move. And uh, you're just moving your guys around and signaling attacks, and each attack has a different distance. So it's a lot more strategy because it's a lot more about placement, but to me, I never really enjoyed those games. And then the last one is like your Star Ocean, where you're in a little arena, you're running around, fighting in real time, and you can occasionally freeze it if you want to use items and stuff and look about status of your, of your, your crew and whatnot and all that. And I love that kind of one. Star Ocean is one of my favourite RPGs, aside from the voice acting and the fucking god-awful characters. And that's pretty much a history of, of the different combat mechanics. And Tactics was the tile-based uh, strategic one. And I don't like those kind of RPGs. I've never been into them, so I've generally avoided them. And Covenant of the Plume is that. Is that kind of thing. And at first, I just didn't get it. It looked really nice. It had really good graphics. Look at me failing in onto this structure here. Uh, if you don't know, this controls a little bit like uh, Tony Hawk skateboarding uh, with a wonky wheel. So it's not quite as responsive, it's more about turning your body than it is turning the board, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, of a gut feeling when it comes to doing the, the small traversal on it, so do bear with me. But it started off the uh, Valkyrie profile as really pretty, really well written. I mean, the writing on that game is probably the best writing I've, I've seen in a game because it's all done in yay old English and it's just so clever, it's, it, it, it's really great. And I, I set off playing it and the first battle took about 30 minutes, I was moving around, I was attacking, there was these lovely sound clips for when you do your attacks, there was these moves called soul crushers where you go into massive animations of just beating the fuck out of enemies, like like you know, Squall's Lion Art from Final Fantasy VIII, one of his limit breaks, and the kind of like limit breaks that you can do at the drop of a bat, if at the drop of a pin, sorry, if you know how to do them. So it was all colourful. I wasn't sure what was happening. It was great, and I was like, "This is awesome," and I just didn't understand it. And then I got to the 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 first town after I looked on you know the world map and I picked the town, and you don't walk around the towns. And to me, that is the biggest slight you can do on an RPG, because it just feels like unnatural. That feels like a fucking, trying to force a rainbow. It's just, it's a slight to God. It's just unnatural. And what you do instead is you select different areas of the village to go to, and when you go there, your character pops up in the bottom left-hand corner, and you have conversations with people on the screen. And you're never actually going to talk to them, you're never actually walking around and embracing them. It's just all done through these menu systems. And I've not really played an RPG like this, and there are many like it. I've just you know, avoided them or not seen them or, you know, just serendipity, that's all you can say. So to me, it was really different. And at, the, and at first, I really didn't like it, but it kind of grew on me because what it became is it became all about the fighting. Going into the towns and going to the shops and, and talking to the, the people and stuff was all this, this little intermission between these big battles. And it was all about getting your characters buffed up, getting your strategy in there, getting your moves in there, so that when combat did happen, you had this hour of, of just strategic warfare. And I'm going to have to put this conversation on a hold right now because we have to chase the dog down. And this can be a little challenging. The only reason it's challenging is because the cloud controls like a piece of shit. But uh, don't do what I did there. I don't know why I jumped over that as a shortcut. Just go up the ramp to the left and hit all the boosts. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to just aim for the boosts. The boosts are the way you want to be. If you miss one, you might still be able to do it. But generally, you're probably going to fail. Uh, the checkpoint is just before you start this area. So don't worry if you do fuck up. You get plenty of time to do it. And if you can do it in under a certain amount of time, I think it's about 25 seconds, you will get an achievement. It's not too difficult to do once you know what you're doing. But it isn't easy, people, so be be aware you might fuck that up a couple times. And um, I'm going to be talking more about Valkyrie Profile in the next video because I have to, because it, it's a game that needs to be... I need to raise the awareness, it's fantastic. But that's the end of Chapter 9, guys. I hope it helped. I hope you're enjoying the guide. That's what they're for. And uh, you take care now.